Well, the Phoenix Suns hoped to book a trip to the NBA Finals, their franchise's first since 1993, but Paul George and the Clippers avoided elimination with this Game 5 win. The Suns not lead the series 3-2. Paul George led the Clips with a playoff career-high 41 points, including 30 in the second half. Welcome back into our NBA TV studios. I'm Kristen Ledlow. That's Greg Anthony. That's Steve Smith down there. And we're with you for the next, well, it really isn't up to us how we're gonna, long we're going to be here. Man. We're, we're going to be here a while. We'll have all of the coach and player press conferences right here on Playoff Central Live presented by AT&T 5G. Let's start right there with PGGA. Yeah. What made the difference for him? Well, I, I think the way the Clippers started the game, and, and by that I mean it showed him that they felt they could win the game, right? I thought Morris was incredible. I think he went 7-8 to eight to start the game. He was just electric, making shots from everywhere. And then also credit Ty Lue for the job he did in terms of the adjustments defensively. The zone gave the Suns a lot of trouble. But it, it started that first quarter. And, and Smitty talked about this the first seven minutes. I remember you mentioned it before we uh, went to the game. Uh, that a lot of times tells you the mindset and the approach. And then Ty Lue, I, I go back to it. I think he has done the best job of in-game management of any coach in the postseason. I mean, he has pushed the right buttons consistently throughout the postseason and never more so than when his team had its back against the wall. And, and I thought, again, that start by Morris set the tone. Paul George was, you know, he was solid early. You know, it wasn't spectacular but he didn't have to overextend himself early. And then he could carry that load in the second half. And then I credit their defense. I just I, Phoenix played tight tonight. I thought they played a little tight. They were a little unsure. And I think the zone caused a lot of that doubt. And what happens as an athlete, when you start thinking you're not reacting, you play slow. And they played slow in the half court, and it really allowed the Clippers to kind of dictate. And once and they just really never gave up control of this game, Smitty. You're totally right, G.A. I, I thought you said it best. Marcus Morris, the way he scored, to me, was stabilizing points because he was posting up. He's been living at the three a lot, and he can shoot it, but if you look the way he established himself down on the block with his size and look at points in the paint, they were lacking all the size in this game, but when you look at it, they 58 points in the paint to 32 and then I thought T. Lou, like G.A. said, we've been raving and all the adjustments and buttons he's pushing. He's just got the magic touch. He comes in with DeMarcus Cousins, goes right to him. Which one of you, I couldn't remember, which one of you said, you did say, right, that Boogie could make the difference in well, this one. He's so talented. Yeah. He just can't play him in long stretches. Got him going. They only had 19 points off the bench. And I think Yogi Ferrell had one in garbage time, so 17. 15 by Boogie Cousins and two by Nicholas Batum. So I thought for sure that they came out, they took the aggressiveness away from the Phoenix Suns with that zone, made them just think for a minute, has them pause, and then next thing you know, they got their confidence. And you said it best, Jake, Marcus Morris, we know Paul George was phenomenal, but Reggie Jackson, how consistent has he been? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Reggie's been consistent, consistent, money. consistent. <laughs> right. 23 points. We expect him now to have 23 points. Yeah. I expect him to see be the second best player on the Clippers night in and night out. Right. That's not something he's done over his career. He's had being this consistent. At least 20 in what six of his last seven games at this point. When you look at the stats, the Clippers, as opposed to the Suns, nearly twice as many points in the paint, nearly twice as many points in transition as well. What was the key to establishing that pace early on? Well, I, it's interesting, too, because I, I thought, again, Phoenix didn't handle the adjustments. Like, Aiden was not a factor, and it wasn't Aiden's fault for a lot of that. It was his the lack of utilization of Aiden. They went, when, when Phoenix was big, the Clippers went small. Mm -hmm. You know, Cousins didn't play against Aiden very much, but they didn't try to go to Aiden. They didn't, because of the zone, they went away from their man-to-man -man principles offensively, and so you never saw him get rim runs, and they didn't try to post him very often. And so I, I thought, you know, that was a part of the issue, and this is where, like, coaching really shows itself. I, I just thought, and it is tough for, for Monty on his end because you really have to wait to see how the Clippers are going to play. Right, because you don't really know. 
you know, because you, you know they're going to do some different things. And he probably thought, you know, they, they may play some zone or whatever. But then the fact that they were making shots early, they came out and got into a big lead. And I thought that changed the game. I thought the fact they got off to such a big lead, it really took Phoenix out of their game plan. It, it got them out of what they wanted to do offensively. And I thought that was also huge for them. They just, and again, they're a young team. You know, obviously, Paul's been around a long time, and, you know, Crowder's been around, but the vast majority of those guys are young, and they played a little tight tonight. And, and I thought that showed, and I thought the Clippers sensed that. Mm-hmm. And then once they got up, as soon as the, the Suns did something positive, Paul seemed to have an answer, or Reggie had an answer. And so, like, they've done what they've done this entire postseason with their back against the wall. They played spectacularly on, on both ends. And, we talked a lot about this, but we got to go back. Paul George, how good has he been in the postseason? Like, like he should be getting the same accolades that we've given to Kevin Durant this postseason with how incredible he was. Embiid was incredible. But Paul George has been equally as good as anybody playing this postseason. Well-